So I noticed today that I'm having an issue with a single pull light switch that I installed. And typically these single pull switches don't go bad, but let's go figure out what's going on if I wired up something incorrectly or maybe the switch went bad. Either way, this is a good way to learn how to troubleshoot a switch. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. All right, so the first thing let's establish is let's make sure that there's power down here. So I'll plug this outlet tester in. And as you can see, I've got power going to this receptacle, but my lights don't work. So before I turn the power off, there's a test that I wanna do in behind this cover plate. And if you're gonna do this, just make sure that you're safe because there is live power going through it. But in order for the test I'm gonna show you here in a moment to work, the power's gotta be on. So just visually looking inside of the box, I don't see where any of my connections have come loose from the terminal screws around this terminal screw or this one. So unless there's a wire broken off in the back somewhere that I can't see, I'm not really seeing a disconnect from the wires. All right, so there's a couple of ways that I could go about testing this switch. In this first scenario, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the power on and I'm going to check for voltage on each of those terminal screws on the hot side of this light switch. If there's nothing wrong with this light switch, then there should be voltage at each one of those terminal screws. So in order to check that, I'm gonna use my multimeter and I'm gonna flip it over here to where it's voltage with the alternating current symbol. All right, so I'm gonna take my first probe and touch it to the ground. And if I find voltage on either one of these terminal screws, this will go to 120 volts. All right, so I've got no voltage there. Let's go to this one. As you can see, it's showing 122 volts, 121.8, so I've got power there. So let's check the top terminal screw again. Still no power, zero voltage there. So this is telling me that more than likely there's something wrong internally with the switch. So now I'm gonna go turn off the circuit breaker. All right, so now the power is off to all this. So I'll show you another way of being able to test this that's a little bit safer than with the power being on. And that's by switching over my multimeter from voltage, alternating current, one over here to the right, where you see this looks like almost a horseshoe symbol. That's for continuity. So what that means is these probes are putting out a signal. And if they're on the same circuit or they touch each other, it'll make a noise just like that. It's letting you know that there is a connection between the two points that you are testing. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna pull the switch out so you can see what I'm gonna do a little bit better. Let's do another inspection real quick, make sure the wiring is still all good. As you can see, the wiring is still around those terminal screws. Pull the switch out. Okay, so all of the line wires are connected underneath of this wire nut here. So all I'm gonna do so you can see a little bit is kind of jiggle it around and pull on it a little bit, just to make sure the wire's not coming out of there. I'm not seeing any loose connections in the box here. So it doesn't look like the wiring is the issue. And we already have a tip that there might be something wrong with the light switch itself. All right, so now I'm gonna to touch one of the probes to this terminal screw and one to this terminal screw. And in order for this to work, the switch needs to be in the on position that is now basically connecting these two terminal screws together. All right, so now I'm gonna take one probe, put it on the bottom terminal screw. And again, if I touch this top terminal screw and the multimeter makes noise, then we know we have continuity and maybe it's not the switch that's the problem. So go ahead and touch that top terminal screw and it's not making any noise. There's no connection between these two terminal screws even though the switch is in the on position. So it would appear that somehow there is an issue with this light switch. So the good news is this is a super easy and inexpensive fix. Basically, I'm gonna to have to replace the switch and after I get done replacing it, if the lights come on, then we know for a fact that the issue was the light switch itself. So I'm gonna leave the power off and I'm going to loosen up both of these terminal screws and then take those wires off and I need to remove the ground wire. So now I will install the new single pole switch. I'll start off by installing the ground wire and I'm gonna wrap that ground wire around that terminal screw in a clockwise direction. Now the reason we wrap it around in a clockwise direction is as we tighten down the terminal screws on each of the wires, it's going to promote pulling in that wire closer to the center of that terminal screw, therefore creating a much better connection. Where if you put it in counterclockwise direction, it has a tendency to wanna to push the wire out away from the terminal screw. All right, so now the ground wire is installed. And now I've got two brass or gold colored screws 
that take two black wires. And on a single pole light switch, it does not matter which wire goes on which terminal screw because the switch is going to make the connection. So the line or the load can go on either one of the terminal screws. So I'll go ahead and install both of the black wires. And again, I'm wrapping these around the terminal screws in a clockwise direction and then tightening them down. Now the wiring is installed, now I can install the light switch back into the box. Now that's all installed, now I can turn the circuit breaker back on. All right, so now as you can see, the circuit breaker is back on. So now I can test out the light switch. So let's turn it on. And there you go. The lights are on now, the switch is working. So that just verifies even further that there was in fact something wrong with the switch and not the wiring itself. So this does happen from time to time, even with receptacles. I've had receptacles go bad. And clearly, as you can see, switches can also go bad. So now that we've established that it was in fact not my wiring that was the issue, it was the switch itself, I'll post a link for that original video showing how I installed the switch and that receptacle in that box. I'll post that right up here if that's of interest to you, and I'll post a link right down here of some other electrical projects that you might be interested in. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.